And that's why it's great now to be joined by Mr. K.P. Fabian, who's the former ambassador of Qatar. Ambassador Fabian, you know Qatar better than just about anybody else. How was this achieved? How did this happen? How were they, from death sentence to commuting to being released and coming home, how was this achieved? Well, let me put it this way. It is, uh, we all rejoice along with the families. Uh, but at the same time, we should try to understand what has really happened. Now, both of us said, we are very, very happy that our people are back. But let us also understand, the Amir of Qatar was also finding himself in a difficult situation in a catch-22 situation because if there is a court verdict that these eight people have conspired against the national security of the state of Qatar and then India seeks the royal pardon, the Amir will find it very difficult to say no to India. Yeah because Qatar attaches the highest importance. All right, so let us try and understand what could have been happening behind the scene now. Obviously, uh, there's a lot of personal intervention there from the Prime Minister. He was directly involved in many ways. He was there right now uh, thanking the Emir. But other potential straws in the wind that, you know, may have happened behind the scene. Of course, there, there was a, a certain change in, in India's voting pattern when it comes to Israel. Uh, that's been happening after the death sentence. Uh, maybe that could have played a factor. Only a matter of speculation, of course. Gas deal was also done. So could those be other levers that were perhaps being pressed behind the scenes? Uh, I'll put it this way, uh, India played it very sort of uh, adroitly. Mm. You know, I, when we are negotiating, you and me, yeah. I may have some points to sort of put pressure on you, but mm. it can be done in a subtle, soft way or in a crude, forceful way. Mm. Now, India did it in a subtle, soft way. And yeah. that is important for us to recognize. And, as I said earlier, the young Amir would never have, I repeat, would never have ordered the execution of eight Indians. Yeah. It is absolutely out of the question. You see, even if they had actually really compromised national security of Qatar, because he is 43, I think, he mm. could have never done it, you see. Ambassador Fabian, I think that's exactly the factor that I'd also like to underline. That whatever the specific teams are, gas deal or anything else, the one major overriding factor which you have to give the government full credit for is the recognition that West Asia is critical for India. The Gulf states are critical for India. And that's why the massive outreach that has been made, not just to Qatar, but to the UAE, to Saudi Arabia, to that entire region over the last few years, is this when we start seeing the fruits of that starting to be to be reaped by India? Because they are also recognizing how important India is for them, how important the relationship is. And once that strategic partnership starts to get built, that's when you can get around things that would have potentially been speed breakers or speed bumps sometime in the past. Is that a good way of looking at it? Is that the broader strategic perspective that underlines all of this? Well, that's correct. But I just want to make one point. You, we both spoke about uh, the meeting between uh, the Amir and our Prime Minister in, during the COP28. Now, that was in Dubai in November, December. Now, very technically, it was a corridor conversation. Yeah. Because neither side had asked for a proper meeting. Mm. Okay. Now, my view is that, and I had expressed this earlier also, that at the time of G20, was it in September? Yeah. India should have invited the whole GCC, because it is the privilege of the host nation to invite others. Instead, Saudi Arabia, of course, is a member, so it did not need any special invitation. If I get it right, only UAE came. Instead of that, I had then said that we should have invited all of them. Then the Amir of Qatar would have come to Delhi. 
because if others are coming, he will also come. Incidentally, just to get it right, you know, it is not to sort of, you know, make any criticism of anyone or anything. When our vice president was there, that was a little before the Doha games and all that. I can't mm. remember the month. Qatar showed its displeasure over certain remarks made by a certain spokesperson of a certain party. You remember that? Yes, and India had reacted very fast to that. I mean, she was the spokesperson of the ruling party, but, you know, taken off television and chastised. India sort of very clearly made that as a gesture towards Qatar, which was one of the first countries to react in a very, very strong manner. So India took care of Qatar's sensitivities, and now, in a sense, Qatar is saying, we understand your sensitivities. Is, is that what's happening? No, quite right. But at that time, we had correctly sent out an invitation for Amir to pay a state visit to India. Mm. And, well, the response from the Qatar side was good. So last question, Ambassador Fabian, Prime Minister Modi now meeting uh, uh, the Emir of, of Qatar, saying thank you to him. It's clearly an enhanced relationship, going along with the enhanced relationship that we are seeing with the UAE. All of this, of course, something which Indians should be very happy about. Also, a, a great personal boost for Prime Minister Modi uh, at a time when elections are uh, around the corner. But, but at a broader level, do you think Qatar, one of those countries with which India should build long-term strategic relations, you know it so well? I believe so. But uh, you will remember that uh, our naval attaché had left Qatar the day these people were detained. Mm. And to my knowledge, he has not yet gone back. So I would say that our defense cooperation can start only when the naval attaché or any other defense attaché returns.